Okay, so it's been such a long time since the last episode. I've got no one to blame but myself. The winter came, I was a fair weather fan builder, and um, yeah, not ashamed to admit that. But the summer's back and there's some good weather ahead. So we're gonna crack back on. And this episode, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up the old floor, take it off, see what's underneath it, give it a real good clean down, see if there's any rust. If there is rust, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna paint it over, get it all rust proof, get it all weather proof, get all the holes filled in, get it ready for the next stage of the build, which means we can start building up insulation and we can crack on. So it's time that we give the old T4 a little bit of TLC, I think. Let's go. As you can see, it's heavily neglected from when I lasted any work on the van, which is months ago, and I've been super lazy and didn't even tidy up after myself. So, I mean, these are all bits of steel, which are rusting terrible. So anyway, I'm gonna clear up the inside, make it a little bit safe to work on. Okay, so this old base is glued around the sides, and then it's also got these big old flathead screws which are keeping it down. So I'm gonna to have to take these out and then I think this will eventually be able to lift up. Okay, so I've taken the old flooring out. This is what it was. I've cut it down into chunks. It's sort of this big thick MDF. And these are where I had to chisel around the bolts which are still in there, just so I could lift the flooring out. And then this was the sort of under there. I don't know if it's insulation, what it was, but it's horrible. It smells of damp and everything. I've just left it outside before I take it to the dump, but that was the old flooring. Okay, so we've taken up the old flooring and it actually looks really good in here. There are a few bits which I'll need to fix is where the bolts were on the old flooring, keeping it in place. Well, they go the whole way through. You can see the gravel there through that hole. So I'm gonna to need to fill those up. I just need to get this bolt off here. Okay, we've just cut the top of the bolt off with the angle grinder. So we can now just hit that through and that bolt should fall out. That'll be all six out. That's all the old flooring and bits and bobs and bolts out now. I mean, these bits of rust are so minor that they need fixing. And I think this here is rust. So I'm just going to sand it all down, uh, clean it all up and then I can paint it and I'll fill these holes in as well. There's, there's six of these. So I've just gone and bought this a wire brush set from online. I'm going to try some of these out in the drill head for the old Makita. We're going to sand it down then we're going to get the hammer right on it and then we can prime it and then we can fill it in as well. Right, I have to say, I was really impressed with that wire brush set. So I've just brushed but all of the rubber and but mainly the paint. So we're back to the steel. I've brushed it all around all of these spots, especially this one, there's quite a lot. And actually, that's a really good example of what hopefully this should fix. So we've got the hammerite crust, 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 who knows. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to paint over all of these spaces like this, all around these bolts and holes and these bits and um, we're just going to let it set and then it should go like a black colour and after that we can prime over the top of it. Okay, I really wasn't expecting that, it's like a milk. But the idea is what we're going to do is we're just going to get some of this and we're just going to brush it onto these spots here. I want to try and keep it just where the rust is in the bare sheet metal. We don't really want it going on the paint so we just want it to react with that bit of rust. That's the idea, so we just want to completely cover the rusty areas. So I'm just going to do that all over. It's, it's reacted instantly. Look at the colour of that. It's bluey black already and that's exactly what it said it would do. It does say leave for three hours, especially because here I put a, perhaps a touch too much. But um, we'll let it set for a few hours whilst we let it dry. Uh, and then we can apply the top coat. I'm going to do these areas as well at some point. That was the rust spot which I said it would go to town on. And it's absolutely going to town on that. Allerys. So the rust spots look pretty good. It's gone all black like it said it would. I actually let it dry overnight. Basically it is ready for the primer now. So got some primer and it's just a case of giving it a shake and then basically applying it around that area just to coat it and protect it from rust. Okay, so we have done two layers of primer as well. So that is all good, but obviously it goes out saying, don't forget the bottom. I'm getting up here and you can see actually it's pretty good. There's hardly any rust, but I have put the hammerite on. I have a little bit of hammerite on a cotton bud just to get up into these areas around here. But I just thought I'd sand this way. So I sanded all, all the grime away and the paint away just to get to the bare metal around here and around here where the, where the hingy bolt was. Um, and I've just put it on the bare metal. Do not underestimate. A good cotton bud. 
This is just some of the P38 hardener that you get. Um, this stuff's actually really good, the isopan. And I'm just going to mix it. I've just put the hardener in, so I'm going to need to mix it quickly. Um, and I'm just going to do it to fill in some of these holes. All right, I filled the other holes up. Um, and for some reason, the other holes are actually a thicker sheet steel. This is really thin. So if I try and put the hardener on, it just falls through. Two front ones, actually. And then this one over here. So I've cut a bit of mesh wiring and that is going to be the foundation. And I'm just going to apply the hardener from the top and I'll let it set. And then what I'll also do is I'll apply some hardener from underneath and get that to set as well. Is it bad that I really like the smell of this stuff? When you take the lid off this, it smells amazing. I'm going to let that set and then that bit of mesh will be nicely solidified in place there. And then what I'll do is I'll probably just put a bit more around it just to make sure it's looking good. A little trick for you, when you want to come to reuse these, just let them dry and snap them. And then all of that just falls off. Yeah. Bin, reuse, reuse, bin. There is couple of little bits I need to do that like this which I was thinking oh let me see what it is there's that one and then I got to this one and it was like that and I thought oh yeah do you know what there's a bit of rust there you can see above my middle finger now and then I kept going going and bagger yeah. I think I'm gonna have to go the whole way along here pick up the rubber and um, see if we've got rust underneath because we do not want that so that's looking pretty good, all the way down to the sheet metal. We're going to put the hammer right on, get rid of these bits of rust, and then when that's dried, we can put the two layers of primer down just to protect it again, get the paint over it. Clean this, and um, we've washed it down with uh, sugar soap, so it's nice and clean. And then we've also got a, a microfiber cloth and wiped it. You're still going to get a little speck. So when you're putting hammer right down, you don't want to be putting, going like that, and then with the specks, which will be on the brush, putting it in, into hammerite bottle, so always pour some hammerite out into a separate container. We've gone for a mug. Why not? Keep it separate so when you're dipping it in, you're not contaminating your actual hammerite bottle. So we're just gonna apply it, and hopefully it will have a really nice reaction here in these um, in these rust bits. Right, so I'm just gonna finish this off. I'm gonna do this all round, and we're just gonna let that set and let that work. And then when that's done, we'll be able to paint over all of that with gray. Okay, and you can see we've primed two layers of primer the whole way across, and actually it looks really, really good. Um, so there's no steel on show, which is great, and all rust is treated. And you can see where the rust was, which is down here, and actually that looks really, really good. So really happy with that, looks fantastic, and uh, nice and protected, and that's all done. Uh, the other good thing uh, which we did was actually we had a very, very, very minor leak just up here. You can actually see there where it was just dripping through. So what I've done on the outside is I've put on another layer of sealer the whole way around the outside of that window and that has stopped any drips, which means there'll be a complete moisture barrier from inside here, which means there is absolutely no leaks, which is probably one of the main causes for future rust. All right, and there we have it, guys. That floor is complete. There you go, look at that. It's actually almost got a shimmer and shine to it. I'm not going to go over these uh, grey bits, and I'm not going to repaint those the same colour as this, because I'm actually going to give the whole van from the outside a new paint job, but there's no need to repaint those anyway. They've had two coats of primer. They are protecting what was exposed steel. That is now safe from rust. So actually, this is all done now. The floor is cleaned, and the floor is rust-proof. And yet we're ready for the next stage, which is insulation.